In this edition of Back in History, we narrate the story of the attempted assassination of Donald J. Trump, former President of the United States of America. Welcome to your favorite channel, Back in History. The date was 13th July 2024. Donald Trump was at a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. He was busy addressing his supporters in his bid to secure their support for his re-election as President of the United States of America. He stood at the podium, talking directly into the microphone and facing the mammoth crowd. Unknown to him, a young man somewhere was aiming a rifle at him and the intention could only be to shoot and eliminate him with immediate effects. As Trump was busy talking and reeling out his plan should he secure a second and last term as President of America, bullets were fired at him. The bullets got to him, but luckily for Trump, it only pierced through his right ear. This was quickly captured by the cameras at the venue of the rally, and the whole world could see blood gushing out from the affected ear. Something serious had just occurred, and Donald Trump had to be given protection as quickly as possible. The Secret Service quickly moved up to the podium, gave the needed cover to Trump, and quickly evacuated him from the podium into a waiting bulletproof vehicle. If the bullet had hit Trump's head, as was intended by the gunman, Donald Trump would have lost his life. But Trump was saved by what many have considered to be the hand of the divine. Trump has since attributed his survival to God. Minutes after the incident, the world got to know about the identity of the gunman. He was a 20-year-old man named Thomas Crooks. Thomas was shot and killed instantly by the Secret Service snipers in a bid to stop him from wrenching further damage to lives at the rally ground. Thomas was from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Investigations revealed that Thomas Crooks fired eight rounds of ammunition from an AR-15 style rifle from the roof of a building 120 meters from the stage where Donald Trump was addressing his supporters. It was only by providence that Trump was not hit on the head by any of the rounds. Unfortunately, one of the attendees at the rally, Corey Comperitore, was hit by one of the bullets and killed while others were seriously wounded. It was further revealed that the gun used in the assassination attempt was owned by Matthew Crooks, father to Thomas Crooks. Thomas took the rifle from his father's custody and made purchase of 50 rounds of ammunition from a gun store nearby and also purchased a 1.5 meter ladder before driving to the site of the rally with an explosive device in the trunk of his car. He climbed onto the roof of the southernmost building of the AGR International Complex approximately 120 meters north of the venue stage. It was from this position that he aimed at Trump and fired the shots at him. Surprisingly, Thomas Crooks was a registered member of Trump's Republican Party. It was thus not clear what may have motivated his decision to assassinate the presidential candidate of a political party to whom he had registered as a member since September 2021 when he turned 18. Following the attempted assassination, the Secret Service Director Kimberly Chito was interrogated by the United States House Committee on Oversight and Accountability. Lawmakers from both parties called for her resignation and on July 23, Kimberly resigned her appointment with immediate effect. Several reactions trailed the news of the attempted assassination of Donald Trump. Joe Biden, President of the United States of America, condemned the attack and ordered for an independent review of the security architecture. He also called for a reduction in heated political rhetorics, emphasizing the importance of resolving political differences peacefully without heating up the polity. Former President George W. Bush called the shooting cowardly and applauded the Secret Service's response to the attack. Former Presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who was Trump's opponent in the 2016 presidential election, 
also condemned the attack and wished Donald Trump swift recovery. Mike Pence, who served as Vice President of the United States under Donald Trump between 2017 to 2021, released a statement saying, Karen and I thank God that President Trump is safe and recovering following yesterday's attempted assassination. He praised the Secret Service for their quick response, which Pence opined undoubtedly saved lives, adding that there is no place in America for political violence and it must be universally condemned. The Carter Center, founded by former President Jimmy Carter, condemned the attack and called for Americans to embrace civility. John Hickley Jr., who himself had attempted to assassinate President Ronald Reagan in 1981, said, quote, Violence is not the way to go. End of quote. Mark Webb, a bishop of the Global Methodist Church, the Christian denomination in which Corey Comperatore held church membership, stated that the assassination attempt was, quote, a senseless act of violence and hatred and implored all to comfort those who mourn and boldly offer the promise of resurrection and new life through Jesus Christ. The National Council of Churches condemned the assassination attempt and also condemned what it described as, quote, toxic polarization, hate rhetorics, and the demonization and denigration of those who hold different opinions. Archbishop Timothy Broglio, President of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, issued a statement condemning the shooting as political violence, emphasizing that it is never a solution to political disagreements. At the international level, many heads of state and government, as well as heads of international organizations, condemned the shooting and expressed good wishes to Trump. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of Canada issued a statement on social media that he was sickened by the attack, adding, quote, My thoughts are with former President Trump, those at the event, and all Americans. Trudeau spoke to Trump on phone following the attack. In the United Kingdom, Prime Minister Kay Starmer led condemnation of the shooting, saying that he was appalled by the attack on Trump, stating that political violence had, quote, no place in our society. Buckingham Palace confirmed on 15th July that King Charles III had written to Trump following the assassination attempt. First Minister of Scotland John Sweeney also condemned the attack on Trump. Prime Minister Modi of India strongly condemned the incident, stating that, quote, violence has no place in politics and democracies, and wished Trump a speedy recovery. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese of Australia condemned the shooting, saying there was, quote, no place for violence in the democratic process, and added that he was relieved to hear that Trump was alive and safe. Prime Minister Christopher Luxon of New Zealand said he was shocked to hear of what had occurred, adding that, quote, no country should encounter such political violence. On his part, the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz condemned the shooting as, quote, an attack on democracy, describing the attack on Trump as despicable and wishing the former president a quick recovery. Other European leaders to condemn the shooting included Viktor Orban of Hungary, Simon Harris of Ireland, Georgia Meloni of Italy, Lok Frieden of Luxembourg, and President Zelensky of Ukraine. President Erdogan of Turkey held a telephone conversation with Trump and praised his bravery. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel released a video condemning the shooting and said it was an attack on democratic institutions everywhere. President Bola Ahmed Tunubu of Nigeria also condemned the attack and described it as, quote, distasteful. The Egyptian head of state, Abdel Fattah, also condemned the attack and described it as treacherous. The Prime Minister of Ethiopia also condemned the attack. President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa 
also condemned the attack and described it as a stark reminder of the dangers of political extremism and intolerance. He added that political violence is the antithesis of democracy. He wished former President Trump a speedy recovery. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg expressed shock at the shooting, condemning the attack on Trump and wishing the former president a speedy recovery. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, was confirmed by a United Nations spokesperson to have unequivocally condemned the attack, describing it as an act of political violence. The press secretary to Russian President Vladimir Putin condemned the event, adding that the shooting took place in an atmosphere created by Joe Biden's leadership in the context of what he argued to be attempts to remove Trump from the political arena. Cuba blamed the United States arms industry and increased political violence in America. Many other very important persons across the globe also condemned the attack even as they wished President Trump a quick recovery. Soon after being confirmed as safe, Trump released a statement recounting his experience, thanking law enforcement personnel and the Secret Service and offering condolences to the families of the people killed and injured. In his words, he stated thus, quote, I want to thank the United States Secret Service and all of law enforcement for their rapid response on the shooting that just took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. Most importantly, I want to extend my condolences to the family of the person at the rally who was killed and also to the family of another person who was badly injured. It is incredible that such an act can take place in our country. Nothing is known at this time about the shooter who is now dead. I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong in that I heard a wheezing sound, shot, and immediately felt the bullet ripping through the skin. Much bleeding took place, so I realized then what was happening. God bless America. End of quote. Donald Trump had since returned to his campaigns. A week after the shooting, at which time Donald Trump had largely recovered from the impact of the shooting and from the shock, Trump continued with his rally and had this to say in one of the appearances, quote, Let me begin this evening with a very special thanks to Americans nationwide, including all of you here today for your extraordinary outpouring of love and support in the wake of the horrific last Saturday events. And come to think of it, it was exactly one week ago today, almost to the hour, even to the minute. I say here before you, only by the grace of Almighty God, that I am here. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. I am alive only by His grace. End of quote. Indeed, the attempt at the life of Donald J. Trump has not only been widely reported across the world, but it has also been widely condemned by Americans across party lines and by several persons across the world. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification on every new video. I am your friend and host Kemi Udim, wishing you the best of time in all that you do.